This is a video about Steve Carlton's absolutely nutty 1972 season. Let's just jump straight into it. In baseball, the impact of a single player has always been limited. As an everyday position player, the best that they can do is three to five plate appearances per game. As a starting pitcher, the best they can do in today's baseball games is show up once every five days and do their best. In the 70s, pitchers were asked to pitch once every three or four days instead of five. Even so, that's only once every three or four days. There's only so much a person can do. Enter Steve Carlton. Steve Carlton played his first seven seasons with the Cardinals. Cardinals ownership had a salary dispute with Carlton, who was looking for a raise of $10,000 from his salary of $55,000. Big money. So the Cardinals decided to shop him. There's another pitcher that piqued the Cardinals' interest, Rick Wise on the Philadelphia Phillies. So just before the 1972 season began, Steve Carlton was traded from the Cardinals to the Phillies one-to-one -one for pitcher Rick Wise. In hindsight, we now know this was probably one of the most lopsided and stupid trades in baseball history. Let's see how Steve Carlton starts off the year. The year for him started well enough with his first six starts resulting in a five and one record in four complete games, of which two were shutouts. Then the Phillies would lose no matter who was pitching, Carlton or not, and his next six starts resulted in five losses and a no decision, including one of his worst starts of the whole year against John Matlack and the Mets. As he stands right now, he's 5-6 and six with four very long months ahead of him. Carlton wins the next game, and then the next one. The third game in this stretch is a no decision, although he pitched 10 innings of shutout baseball before being taken out of the games so that the Phillies could ultimately lose the game. But he wasn't the pitcher out there, so he doesn't get the loss. He pitches five innings in his next starts and gets saddled with another no decision, but the Phillies win this time, thanks in part for the backup catcher Mike Ryan hitting a double to push them ahead 9-7 in the top of the ninth. Then Carlton keeps winning and winning and winning. This stretch was incredible. From June 7th through August 17th, he goes 15 and zero, bringing his record now to 20 and six. In this stretch, he has an ERA of 151. He held batters to a 192 batting average during this stretch. Out of 18 of these starts, 14 were complete games. Near the end of this streak, he pitched eight consecutive complete games with four shutouts and three games with two earned runs or less during that stretch and he averaged 3.2 days of rest during this stretch. During this stretch, when he pitched, the Phillies went 17-1. Without him, the Phillies were 8-39. His team was 42-69 and 69 at that point. I would normally say nice, but that isn't. The streak would have continued had it not been for this particular game. And the only reason why the stretch ended at all is when... Steve Carlton fulfilled a ridiculous task of pitching the next game through the 11th, which was ultimately lost due to the fact that the Phillies couldn't score runs. Here are a couple other pitchers that can relate to this problem, but I digress. Carlton would finish out August with another win and a loss, bringing his win-loss total to 21-8 with a 2.19 ERA, 259 strikeouts, and 275 and a third innings pitched. Let's take a break from his year and put this into perspective. Here are a list of seasons where pitchers had these exact results or better. A 21-8 record or a winning percentage of 724, an ERA of 219 or lower, and at least 259 strikeouts. There are seven pitchers who have done this. Dazzy Vance is the first, who despite only putting up numbers like this in three other seasons was considered one of the highest strikeout kings back in the 1920s. Denny McLean had connections with organized crime and, had it not been for that and arm injury shortly after, he could have been considered one of the greatest pitchers of his generation. 
Pedro Martinez would put up an absurd 291 ERA plus the following year, but with less strikeouts and wins. Sandy Koufax is on here twice, right at the apex of his career. There's a reason why one of his nicknames is the left arm of God. There's Dwight Gooden's season just after he had won Rookie of the Year and set the new rookie record for strikeouts in a season. Roger Clemens would be on here twice if he struck out 21 more batters in 1986. Vita Blue won both the Cy Young and MVP this year, but never returned to his full glory afterwards. Four of the seven haven't made the Hall of Fame, but for those that didn't, the Cy Young Award was still around during that time, and the four that aren't in the Hall have some hardware to show for their efforts. And here's Steve Carlton, with a month left in the season. All he had to do was fulfill his seven September starts and one October start, and this already historic year will have been completed. <laughs> Just in case you were not absolutely sure about how dominant he was going to be this year, he reaffirmed that triumphantly in these last eight starts. His ERA over these games was 1.14. Every game was a complete game. Only one of those games had he given up more than one earned run. Steve Carlton's record at the end of the year was 27 and 10. The Phillies won 59 games this year. With some quick math, Steve Carlton was responsible for 45% of the games won by the Phillies that year. And as I could find, it's the highest percentage of games won by a single pitcher on a losing team since 1969 when the mound dimensions were changed. Plus, I didn't find an easy way to calculate this, so I went through every season from a losing team, found their best pitcher, and figured it out myself. The interesting thing about this is that the second place pitcher on this list was Gaylord Perry, who did it in the same year when he won 24 games compared to his team, the Cleveland Guardians, 72 games. But that only comes out to 33%, but it's still impressive. Now, wins are a bit of a misleading statistic because a reliever can come in, pitch one inning and get a win, or a starter can pitch eight innings and give up nothing or one run and either get a no decision or lose. However, the fact that he did this in the first place is incredibly impressive. Let's revisit the arbitrary Steve Carlton comparison list. This time, let's see who has, in the history of Major League Baseball, had a win-loss record of at least 27 and 10 or better, an ERA of at most 1.97, and had at least 310 strikeouts. Sandy Koufax. Sandy Koufax is the only player in the history of baseball to put up a season of equivalent caliber or better to that of Steve Carlton this year. After all this is said and done with the season, a few more things need to be addressed. The stat I'll be using for this last part is called WAR, or Wins Above Replacement. Basically, it is calculated to determine how much better or worse than an average player is as a whole, like how many more wins they would have added to a team because of their presence there. Steve Carlton amassed a 12.1 pitching B WAR that year. Since the live ball era, 1920, that places him second behind only Dwight Gooden's insane 1985 season. Here is a list of every pitcher to put up a 12 or better pitching b since 1874, which is essentially the beginning of baseball, and in chronological order. Most of these values come from pitchers before the turn of the centuries, and they include some preposterous numbers, and some well-known names like Old Haas Radborn, Al Spaulding, Pud Galvin, Cy Young, Walter Johnson also makes this list. That 12.1 pitching b at the time was the first time a pitcher had at least a 12 BWAR since Walter Johnson in 1913, 59 years prior, and the only time it has been passed since was Dwight Gooden's 1985 season. Now I'm going to throw another baseball reference war statistic in. His total baseball reference war that year was 12.5, which had him tied for third with Roger Clemens in 1997 behind only Pete Alexander in 1920 and the aforementioned Dwight Gooden. We know that's ridiculous. That is stupid. That is completely ridiculous. But let's put that number in perspective in that year. 
1972 Phillies that year, these were the next 11 most valuable players aside of Steve Carlton sorted by war. Don Money, Larry Boa, Greg Lazinski, Terry Harmon, Willie Montanas, Barry Lersch, Joe Horner, Dave Downs, Joe Liss, Ken Reynolds, and Tom Hutton. The sum total of their B-War is 12.5. Steve Carlton's is 12.5. It took 11 players on his team to be as valuable as one man. When Carlton reflected on his 1972 season, he said, I was mentally committed to winning 25 games with the Cardinals, and now I had to rethink my goals. I decided to stay with the 25-win goal and won 27 of the Phillies' 59 victories. I consider that season my finest individual achievement. It ended up being one of the most finest individual achievements from any player in any year. Thanks for watching this whole thing. Please like and subscribe. Thank you.